this is Rex, Rex recites. Today, he was doing a poem that I wrote about a month ago called The Goldilocks Zone. Now, the Goldilocks Zone is sort of a scientific term that refers to the fact that certain planets are in places where life might exist. And the name Goldilocks Zone comes from the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, of course, when she found, she found everything that was just right for her visit eventually. And so everything on the earth and around the earth is just right for human life to exist. And how many other planets in the universe that might support life comparable to, to, comparable to human life, we have no idea. But anyway, uh, and instead of reciting the poem, I'm going to be actually reading it. I have partially memorized it, but I'm going to be actually reading it, and the poem, one stanza at a time, is going to be on the screen so you can see it as I read it. And when I read each stanza, I will then say a few words of explanation or commentary about that particular stanza, and then we will work through the poem stanza by stanza. Okay, the first verse of the poem, The Goldilocks Zone, and I have subtitled this simply, The Earth. And as I read the first stanza, you of course can look at the picture of the solar system on the screen. And it goes like this, at number two, Venus is a boiling mess. At number four, Mars is a frozen mass. At number three, Earth enjoys its own class, temperatures supporting humanness. Now one to five percent different Sol distance is apocalypse. The rest of Sol's children are useless for containing meaningful life essence. Though Jupiter from astral trash keeps us. Okay, let me say a few words of, of commentary about this because this may be new, this idea may be new to you. So the temperatures that the average temperatures that the Earth has is supporting supports human life. On Mars it's too cold and Venus is morning hot, so life cannot be, human life especially, cannot be supported. Some primitive kinds of life might be supported on other planets like, like Venus and Mars, but nothing approaching human life could be. Now, the distance from the sun, from Sol, for example, is just right for these temperatures to be uh, are common on the earth. If we were much closer or much farther away from the sun, the temperature would be all off as the earth would be our barren planet as Mars and Jupiter and the rest of the planets in the solar system are. And so life cannot exist on the other planets in our solar system, although Jupiter serves a useful purpose because all of the asteroids and extraterrestrial bodies that hit Jupiter would probably would hit the Earth and may, maybe make life impossible because it would be too much of a, 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 of a collision between these things and the Earth. Okay, the next stanza is entitled The Big Splash and the that name will become obvious to you as we go through the stanza and at the end I will all say a few words of comment to make it especially clear. Four billion years from its inconceivable birth, a Mars-sized body splintered Mother Earth. It sank therein, causing the strong, life-friendly magnetic field that produces life's yield. 
This collision's debris also made the moon, which stabilizes and feeds the earthly cocoon. And so this inconceivable time of four billion years from the birth of this planet, and it crashed into the earth, and it had the effect, had several effects, one effect of causing the magnetic field without which life would be impossible. This collision also made the moon, and without our moon, likewise, to for the tides and the other other things that the moon furnishes for the earth, who, uh, life would also be impossible. All right, the next the next stanza also continues about the benefits of the big splash, how it caused things to happen that were necessary for life to human life to exist in the far distant future. The glancing blow of the big splash too knocked the earth 23 degrees askew so that seasons could automatically ensue and days of reasonable length come true. Continental plates gliding over the mantle made by this collision burst the handle of moderate temperatures absolutely crucial to life and its continuance substantial. Okay, now going back to the beginning of, the, of this verse, uh, I'm sorry, going back to the last few lines of this verse, uh, the earth was knocked by this big splash 23 degrees off of the horizontal. And this is responsible for the seasons that we have. And also for, for the reasonable length, 24 hour, four hours of the length of the day. And it's responsible for the continental plates that is below the sur surface of the earth and in constant motion. And this, of course, is one for one thing caused the occasional earthquakes. So these plates gliding over the mantle of the earth, that is the, uh, the foundation that the surface of the earth rests on uh, a few miles below the surface, gave birth to modern temp moderate temperatures also, without which, of course, life could not exist. Now the next stanza, sort of summarizes what we have said so far. In short, the accidental big splash caused the providential big hash, that is the meal, the ingredients that caused the dash producing life. In short, all the cash, or all the, the provision, which purchased all of life so rash, the moon, the tides, Earth's rotation, the seasons, magnetic field, and continental drift without frustration. And without any of these things I just mentioned, that this verse just mentions, life would be impossible. And these, this all happened because of the accidental Big splash, the accidental collision of another planet with the Earth. Now, if this wasn't enough, just look in the next stanza. And this, that is the big splash, was just one intervention. The biggest was the Permian extension, extension when life suffered almost total obliteration and the Goldilocks zone was practically a zone of devastation. So the Permian extension, for various reasons, caused almost uh, about 98% of life to disappear from the Earth. And in following millennia, millions of years, uh, 
the life did come back, including the dinosaurs. And uh, the last verse uh, talks about this part of existence of the earth. Millions of years later, dinosaurs were comedically destroyed, permitting Homo sapiens, especially, to rise as inheritors of the earth spatially. Humanity came about because other kind species skated until they outfaded, until they were destroyed. So millions of years led when the dinosaurs came, first came along, and we know that they were destroyed by a comet that hit the earth and caused all the, the devastation. And the dinosaurs ruled the earth for some 70 million years and then before they were destroyed. And finally, Homo sapiens, or human beings, developed on the earth. And humanity could, came about because all other competitive species were destroyed because they skated around rather aimlessly as far as compared to humanity until they faded out. Okay, that concludes this poem, The Goldilocks Zone, which as I say I wrote about a month ago after doing some research and reading up about the, the whole question, and I hope you enjoyed my rendition of it, and I realize that it might have been strange or new material to many of you, and I hope now that you might have a better conception of the reasons why we are on earth. And so I hope that you enjoyed my rendition of it, and that you come back and visit Again, and subscribe to my channel below. Thank you. Rex recites.